Well, good morning, folks. It's so nice to be in Catholic studios here in Watertown celebrating the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass with you. As uh, we re listen to both readings today, both of them are kind of situated on the temple, that very holy temple uh, that was in Jerusalem. This first reading we hear today is from the book of Maccabees. The Maccabees were a group of brothers and then uh, others as well, um, and they were Jewish warriors. Uh, they would come together. At the, t at the time they were coming together, um, Jerusalem had been overcome by foreign invaders, you know, Alexander the Great, and they had been there a, quite a long time at that point. The people became more Hellenized, that, more, that is more absorbed into a Greek and Roman culture at that point, and pulled away more and more from worship of God within the Jewish faith. And this was a problem. And the temple, you know, wasn't really that worship area that it should have been at that point. And we, we see in the Maccabees, they were actually Jewish warriors. We see that they want that temple to be back to the right status that it should have been and for the people to be back in right relationship with God. And so that's what they are doing. They are fighting the invaders and they're driving them out. And as we hear in this first reading, we hear how they're successful in, in doing so. But as we hear this, there is kind of that little nuance here. Yes, they are driving out uh, the, uh, the foreign invaders, but they're also driving out a part of the Jewish population who has become so Hellenized, so absorbed into the other cultures that they worship false gods and they're not worshiping the God who has entered into covenant with them. If today's reading seems familiar, and they say that after that, what they do inside there is they go and redecorate the temple and they rededicate it and, re and they consecrate the temple. Does anybody know, uh, and, they talk, and they talk about this has to be remembered, a feast day is established for this uh, uh, among the Jews. Does anybody know what the, what the uh, feast day is? It begins with H and we're going to celebrate very soon. Hanukkah, yeah. This is all about Hanukkah that we're hearing inside here. So why is it at, the, at this point we're hearing about Hanukkah? Because we're not in December, are we? No. no, all right. All right, we might put up Christmas trees on Halloween, but I'm sorry, when it comes to the faith issues, no. You know, we don't want to mess things up. Well, let's put this in proximity to what's going to happen this weekend. This weekend is the feast of the kingship of Jesus, correct? Jesus, mighty king. And so... We hear how Jesus fulfills, and, we, and as we listen to today's gospel, we hear in today's gospel how Jesus goes. He's inside that temple area, and he's telling them, not good things are going to happen. That temple is going to get torn down, and they're going to find themselves, they're going to be killed themselves. And he's going off and telling them this. And he's weeping himself because he doesn't want this to happen. But he realized because they rejected the message that he's the Son of God, that they reject the Messiah, this is what's going to come to pass. And no matter what he does, you know, what he's trying, they're not listening. So what do we see in terms of maybe a theme of those things? Well, both kind of show us that ultimately, you know, God always wins out. So that's why we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, don't we? But the Maccabees, didn't they win out themselves? Now remember, the Maccabees themselves, the, the time in which we're talking about this, is only a couple of hundred years before Jesus comes. So it's very fresh in history in terms of where that situation is, where Jesus is. I mean, only a couple of years, hundred years ago, they rededicate that temple and bring it back to the glory that it is. And it only takes a couple of hundred years for them to start slipping and not recognize the Messiah. So one asks the question, how could this be? One would think that they had been, almost in kind of had been invaded for, uh, uh, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And then finally did they get released from that through these Jewish war war warriors, the Maccabees. And what do they do? They slip back, all right? What does I think uh, um, uh, our, our other Christian friends would use the term? They backslide, right? They backslide inside. There. And it's not kind of a pretty thing because it doesn't help anybody. And what happens, a lot of times, the way when these people are backsliding, it's because of their very affluent. You know, they're very comfortable, and they don't need God as much anymore. And so that's why this stuff happens. And 
one asks that question, you know, how is that 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 happens? And I would suggest here that if we're going to celebrate the feast, feast of Christ the King, we also need to acknowledge another person uh, in this equation, and that's the devil himself. So it's Satan himself that we have to realize. What do we celebrate? Christ the King, Christ's victory over death, Christ's victory over the devil himself. So that's what we're going to celebrate this weekend. You know, but what we want to understand here is in this, in this victory that's going about that the devil is always still going to try to beat Jesus at his game. It's never going to happen, but he's always going to try to do that. Now, while he knows in the end he loses, he's going to try to bring as many souls as he can into hell rather than heaven. And unfortunately, he tempts us through various ways. He tempts us a lot of times with the affluence that we have, we, we have in our lives, or the fact that we seem very secure. Despite our security, we should always remember our security is found in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our security is always found in God. The Maccabee warriors knew that, didn't they? The early disciples and the disciples to this day, they've known it as well. The heroic men and women of the New Testament, they knew it. All of this shows us that we know it ourselves. So what does this call us to? It calls us to be vigilant, not to backslide. To be vigilant to Jesus as our Lord and Savior. To believe that no matter what happens to us, no matter what tra tragedy happens to us, travesty, injustice, mean thing that happens to us, we always want to remember Christ is the King. He's the King of Kings. He will protect us. He will watch out over us. And also remember, as disciples, we serve in the kingship of Jesus Christ. Jesus was the servant of all servants. And on our baptism, we take on Christ, and we too go off there, and we serve those around us. There are many ways, but preaching the word of God in our actions are the most effective. Let's share to other people the great protector we have in our lives, our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever.